Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown, particularly on the Steam Deck. We are on Steam OS. So let us give this a quick tryout. Oh, today we're going to be discussing my optimized settings for Steam OS and for Windows 10. And for Steam OS, the recommended settings are as follows. You can't play it. That's all I can say. <laughs> so the developer and publisher, Nikon, Nikon, probably should have figured out how to pronounce this before making this video. Regardless, a uh, developer says that, no, you cannot play this on Steam Deck. There is a anti-cheat engine running in the background that is for Windows that is preventing it from starting on SteamOS. They actually are currently working on it, which is actually a surprise. It's, it's interesting to see when developers are aware of the problem, but it's also nice to see when they're aware of the problem and they're saying that they're actually working on it. So it seems like that getting Steam Deck support is important to them. Uh, it's just for the moment being, if we go to, I don't know, compatibility, we use compatibility layer, do Proton Experimental, give it another go with our fingers crossed. It said launching executable, so maybe something? And no. So, I mean, I could sit here and try literally all day and go to the next Proton and then continue to wait. But we all know it's in vain because the developers said exactly what the problem is. So, that being said, Steam OS. Where am I going? There we go. Steam OS. Don't bother installing it. Leave it uninstalled. And here we are on our Windows 10 partition of the Steam Deck. First and foremost, uh, it is giving us this error here. I'm trying to remember how to update our AMD drivers, but we will digress. Hopefully uh, nothing too traumatic happens. Yes, it gives us a secondary reminder that the drivers that we're using currently are not great. But... The difference is, we are now on a splash screen. And we are actually running the game. Look at that. So here we are in Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown on Windows 10 on the Steam Deck. This one was actually a little bit interesting because versus a really hard 20 to 30 frames a second, we're actually doing pretty okay in about the low 40s, which is actually quite a bit faster than I was expecting when it came to uh, this game. Um, being a brand new game, we were not expecting it to be very well optimized, especially for like a handheld uh, device like the Steam Deck. We are running resolution in 1280 by 800 vsync is off and we have fsr2 at ultra performance we'll get back to that in a little bit graphics as you know it everything is on off or is on low absolutely everything so part of the issue with fsr2 because it is an ai upscaler and we are using an incredibly low resolution is that we've got all sorts of artifacts and all sorts of fuzzy, just not great looking objects at all. And of course, part of FSR 2, we've got that kind of ghosting effect with, uh, you know, other vehicles. So just because I'm interested, let's keep FSR 2 on. And let's bring it to a more quality setting. Looks like our frame rate has stabilized in the low 30s. But a lot of that fuzziness has gone away. If we look around the mirrors, the ghosting isn't quite away completely. But... For a... What? 30% frame drop to have a more stable frame rate on the handheld device. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? Let me know if uh, you guys would be like myself, where you like the extra frames, even if it does have a lower visual quality, or if you're looking for just something a little bit more 
higher end that you're okay with a little bit of a frame drop. I think we'll go back and I will try at least performance. So you can bring a couple of those frames back. Definitely didn't bring any driving talent back, that's for sure. <laughs> here we are, first race. Oh, lordy lordy. This is one of the interesting things when it comes with this Steam Deck. Uh, when... With most games, when you start looking up onto the horizon, that's an area that you want the most amount of detail, because in those couple of pixels, so far up ahead, will tell you all sorts of information. It'll tell you how far away something is and what's coming towards you. And it's especially important in a racing game that the quality in the middle of the screen is as high as possible. So you can tell where, you know, you're driving. And that's why something like FSR 2 on ultra performance mode makes that incredibly difficult, especially at such a low resolution. Because all of a sudden, if you're looking all the way up, up onto the horizon, it's a lot of really low quality pixelated blobs that are just kind of up there. And it wasn't until, I don't know, about two seconds ago that I was able to tell that we've got, you know, a right hander there. And then up over here, I mean, I guess we've got a straight. Again, it's, it's the information that's being told at a graphical fidelity is really not there. But if we go and do the thing that I didn't want to do and lower our frame rate and go to a more quality mode. I think we can tell a little bit better. So this is some things to keep in mind when it comes to choosing the settings that you want to go for when it comes to this kind of game setup. Like I said, I like the higher frames, but man oh man, is it kind of a problem. So now running FSR in the quality mode versus ultra performance, we're going to see if we can perform any better and just playing now the immediate thing that I'm noticing is because of a lower amount of frames it also seems that we have an increased level of latency here where it's when I'm trying to put down the throttle down on the certain area it just seems a lot more sluggish than if I'm running in the ultra performance mode so long story short, before I ramble any much more on this, I would probably recommend doing a balanced or a probably more on a performance level for FSR. Without FSR, I wouldn't even dare to try what this game would be like. It's just, you really need that AI upscaler to really just help out. Because already we're running such a low resolution. We need to give any performance that we can in order to get this to perform at all. That all being said, I'm still relatively impressed with how this game is running. It's, I don't know if Windows in general on Steam Deck has just gotten better support, but it just seems games, Windows based games in general are performing a lot better than they did about a year ago. It could have been the optimization that some of these gaming companies have done. Because, yeah, just even last year trying out some of these games on Windows 10, it's like, it, it don't even bother. And recently, it's gotten much better. So that's one of the nice things that I am really enjoying about uh, racing games recently is, yes, some of the optimization has not been great, but it seems like the optimization for getting these lower-level hardware, at least getting them running, is in a much better place. Yeah, we're not going to see them running at a 60 frames at, you know, medium quality graphics. It's not to that level of optimization. The one thing that I've always struggled a little bit when it's come when it comes to some of these games is would you rather have a game running natively or would you be okay with a increased level of latency for a higher amount of graphics to for instance stream this game from the PC. 
So kind of like taking the PlayStation Portal approach, I think the Steam Deck, when it comes to games with Windows support, you have arrived. I think games that are with SteamOS support would make more sense to be running them natively through SteamOS. But the games like Forza Motorsport or games like Test Drive Limited or Need for Speed Unbound, you know, games that are more meant for Windows support, I think it would maybe make more sense to be running them natively through, like, your gaming computer and doing the Steam Remote Play and then being able to get in that way. Because, again, to be fair, this is a completely playable experience. Don't get me wrong. But the thing that I really struggle with is, as a racing game enthusiast, there's just that that little itch that I want to have scratched where it's like you ha get a brand new triple A game racing game you want to see how well those ray trace reflections are running you want to see how well the cars look and how well everything just seems to run at a silky smooth 60 frames a second to me this game is ultimately I will always have this first impression experience of running this game for the very first time through Steam Deck. So even if I start playing it regularly on like my gaming computer, I'm still going to remember what this looked like on Steam Deck as like a first impression. And first impressions, unfortunately, are incredibly important. So when it comes to a game like this, do I want to remember? this kind of mediocre kind of graphics or do I want to remember being wowed and having just a little bit more latency so that's that's the argument that I always want to make here is that you can run these games natively through Windows on Steam on the Steam Deck but maybe it would make more sense to do Steam Remote Play I don't know so that all being said, let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section below if this game in your mind is totally playable, or if you're in agreement that maybe something like Steam Remote Play would be a little bit better of experience. We can just really enjoy playing this game on your sofa upstairs and just letting your game computer downstairs do all the work for you while you just you know watch TV and enjoy this game or I don't know it's it's a very interesting question or thought process so again let me know what you guys are thinking uh, in the comment section down below if you want to play this more on a native 1280 by 800 or if you're okay with doing um, something a little bit different. So again, let me know all what you're thinking down in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.